All right, guys, I'm going to be reading out of Rules by Cynthia Lord. Uh, the next chapter I'm going to be reading is roughly the sixth chapter, and it's entitled, Sometimes Things Work Out, But Don't Count on It. On Saturday, I find Mom in the kitchen pressing raw hamburger into patties. I was thinking we should invite the new neighbors to our barbecue, she says. This could be a nice chance to introduce ourselves. Great! I watch her hands shape another hamburger, and I know I'd better choose my next words carefully. What about David? What about him? Well, sometimes he forgets the rule about chewing with his mouth closed, or he drinks from somebody else's soda, or... They live next door, Catherine. Mom looks over the top of her glasses at me. You can't pretend that he doesn't exist. I trace a line on the linoleum with my toe. I know, but it's, it's hard enough to make new friends without worrying he'll do something embarrassing. I just want it to be nice today, a fun cookout with nothing going wrong. Dad and I will watch him. And that's actually the worst possible answer. It's only a teeny step from both parents watching to neither watching, each thinking that the other one is in charge. Maybe you could make a schedule and take turns. We'll both watch him. She pounds the hamburger with the palm of her left hand to flatten it. Why don't you run over and invite the neighbors now so I'll know how much food to prepare? Well, what time should I say? I'll tell them lunch will be at one, though they're welcome to come early. She tears wax paper from the roll and covers the layer of hamburgers. Heading for the hallway, I remember what I came into the kitchen to ask. Can we go to the mall later? I need some new colored pencils. My crimson and indigo are only about two inches long now, and I'd love more greens. Well, maybe you could earn them by doing extra babysitting? I grit my teeth to keep from snapping. If David wanted them, you know you'd buy them. But there's no point because I already know her answer. Well, that's different. And she's right. It is different, and here's how. Everyone expects a tiny bit from him and a huge lot from me. In the hallway, I bounce between worrying things could go wrong, like what if David spills something on his shorts and takes them off in front of everybody, and hoping things go right, like the girl next door might really like me. Before I open the front door, I close my eyes and I wish. Just this once. Let it be easy. Outside, Dad is pitching a tennis ball to David on the front lawn. Here it comes! David swings too late and the ball thumps against the side of the porch. All done? Let's watch TV. Like I said, you have to try ten times before you can watch TV. Dad picks another tennis ball from the pile on the grass at his feet. We have five balls left. Catherine, tell him when to swing. David and I sigh together. He lifts the plastic bat and moves his feet apart. Feet apart. Swing, I yell as the ball comes close. David misses anyway. You need a bigger ball, I tell Dad. He'd have a better chance. Well, it'd help if we had a catcher, he replies. You want to play? I look across the fence pickets to the woman in her lawn chair reading. No thanks. Mom said I could invite the uh, family next door to our cookout, and she's waiting to hear if they're coming. Dad bends to grab the next ball from the pile. And you'll be in charge of David. It's only half the truth, but if Dad thinks he's in charge, he won't wait for Mom to do something. All right, he says. Elbows up. Get ready to swing, David. Walking to the fence, I notice the woman is younger than Mom, with short brown hair and sunglasses so dark I can't see her eyes. Excuse me. She sets her paper back face down on her lap. Hello. Hi, I live next door. I cringe at how stupid I sound. Of course I live next door. Why else would I be talking over our fence to her? She smiles. My daughter Christy will be excited to meet you. She's with her dad this weekend, but I'll send her over to introduce herself when she gets back. My heart drops. She's not home. That'd be great. My mom was wondering, and then David shrieks. I turn to see the plastic bat flying through the air, David runs in a tight circle, flailing his arms, his mouth wide and another ear-piercing howl. As Mom dashes down the porch steps, Dad calls to her, It's all right. It's just a bee. I can't see our new neighbor's eyes behind her sunglasses, but her lips aren't smiling. I want to sink behind the fence and hide, but it wouldn't do any good. She'd still see me between the slats. Oh, look at the time, I say, checking my watch. Sorry, gotta go. Bye, the woman says. I'll tell Christy that you stopped over. Hurrying for the house, 
I passed Mom sitting cross-legged on the grass with David thrashing in her arms. David's so big he doesn't fit on Mom's lap anymore, and they look twisted and awkward tangle of elbows and knees, arms, and legs. Dad picks up the plastic bat. Don't baby him, he says to Mom. The bee didn't even land on him. His back all ready to her. Dad doesn't see Mom's lowered eyebrows. He can't help being afraid, she snaps. Why can't you comfort him? It shouldn't always have to be me. Well, you're the one who ran out of the house, Dad shoots back. I glance to the fence, hoping the lady next door can't hear them. She's reading, her book held high to block the sun. Shh, Mom soothes David. It's all right. A bee won't hurt you unless you bother him. I want to yell at her. It's not that easy. David can't even figure out what'll bother me. I kick a tennis ball out of my way and watch it skitter across the grass and bounce against the steps. Dad bends to pick up the tennis ball. As I run up the porch steps, he asks wearily, Well, did you invite the new neighbors? They're busy. I lie, closing the front door behind me.